So I just picked up one of these uh, hot air solder rework stations. Um, you might see these under a different brand, uh, Atten, A-T-T-E-N. I believe those are for the uh, European market. Uh, this is um, for the North American market, for the 110 volts. Um, anyways, I, I looked online extensively uh, at uh, different reviews to see what these were like, and everybody seemed to think they were pretty good, had good features and a good quality in the build. Um, although a couple of the reviewers said that there was a problem with the uh, uh, the North American versions and that they'd wired up the AC input uh, incorrectly but if you knew what you were doing you could easily fix it so I thought well I know what I'm doing so I can fix it so I bought one and and it wasn't very expensive it was around about a hundred dollars so I got it just the other day and I opened it up uh, right away without even turning it on uh, to, to correct that wiring problem on the input and uh, I'll show you what the wiring problem was if you look at it now this is the uh, AC input from the the wall socket and there's three wires here and uh, if, if a European model would have different colored wires here but the, the uh, green wire is the same in both cases um, the, the green wire here is the ground and uh, it it goes to the third prong of the plug um, but it also is supposed to go to the chassis of any of the electronics that you, that uh, AC goes into, and, and this is doing what it's supposed to do. It's going to the, uh, the the metal chassis. These other two wires here, the black and the white, are where the AC comes in. Now, um, the black wire is what we call the hot lead. Um, this wire would be blue in Europe and it's called the line, but uh, it's also called line here as well. But this is where the AC comes in here. The white lead here is called the neutral, and it's the brown lead in Europe. Um, and it's the return path, and it actually is um, connected back at the, uh, the box where your power comes in to your house, to the green lead here. So they're essentially at the same potential. Um, so anyways, the, uh, the power comes in on the black lead here, and it's supposed to go, uh, when it's correctly wired, through all the switching devices before it gets to the electronics. Therefore, it has to go through the fuse and the power switch. And um, that's the fuse, so it will come in, go straight to the fuse here, and then through the wiring into the uh, panel here, and into this, which is the uh, power switch. And then uh, from the power switch, it goes into the electronics, does what it has to do, and it comes out of the electronics directly into the white wire and back into the AC mains. Now when this unit arrived uh, the black and the white wires had been wired up uh, backwards and uh, it didn't really affect the operation of this but it does affect the safety and there's a reason why the black and the white wires are wired up in the way I just described and it's for safety. I won't go into too much detail but um, this one when I got it was wired incorrectly. So anyways, a couple of minutes with a soldering iron and some heat shrink tubing, and I corrected that problem. So then I put it back together, and I plugged it back in, and powered it up, and uh, it didn't really work properly. Now, um, the display lit up, it showed the temperature. I could change the, the set point of the temperature with these two buttons. You can increase it or decrease it with the buttons. Uh, the fan, the blower, and the wand worked. It was running. I could change the speed of the of the fan or the blower in the wand by with this knob here, but uh, it wouldn't come up to temperature. Now it has a standby feature so that when you take it out of the cradle, like this, it'll start up and it'll run the fan and the heater until the uh, air the air gets to the the set point temperature. You can see the temperature rising in the display until it reaches the set point, and then it, then it just stays at that temperature and the, the soldering station maintains the hot air at that temperature. In my case, it didn't do that. The temperature stayed the same, but at about six degrees, which it was never hot enough. It just never got hot. When I put the, uh, when you put the, uh, the wand back into the cradle here, um, it detects that. I think uh, there might be a magnetic switch in here because there's a couple of magnets in each side of the, uh, the, the cradle here. Um, but when, when you put it back in the cradle, the soldering station goes into a standby mode. It uh, runs the fan without the heater on until the temperature drops below about 120 degrees Celsius. And then <coughs> it shuts off and just waits for you to pick it up again. So <coughs> I didn't know what was going on here. 
So I dug a little deeper and the first thing I did is I pulled the wand apart and looked inside it. Everything looked okay in there. I found the connections for the heater core and I measured it and I got about 20 ohms there. And that seemed about right. This is this unit here is rated at 650 watts and 20 ohms across 110 volts gives you about 650 watts approximately. So I started tracing things on the circuit here, circuit board here. The uh, AC comes in here onto the circuit board and it goes over to this device here and this is called a triac and this is an electronic switch <clears throat> and what it does is it switches the AC on to the uh, into the wand into the heater core in the wand and this plug here with these two wires is the uh, heater core in the wand and so this triac gets turned on and off by the microcontroller which is this this black chip here um, and it, that's how the uh, soldering station maintains the temperature. The microcontroller measures the temperature and turns it off when it gets too high and turns it back on when it gets too, too low, etc., etc. And it does that through this device here, this track, which is uh, an electronic switch. Now, um, I was looking around. Everything looked okay on the circuit. I looked at some of the components in here and uh, um, I noticed that there was a resistor in here, which is just above my finger. That's a new one. Um, the res resistor that was in there um, was actually burned out. And so um, I thought, well, let's have a look and see what's going on here. So um, I wasn't sure how this circuit was wired up, but uh, this white chip here is part of the, uh, the control circuitry uh, of the TRIAC, and it interfaces between the microcontroller and the TRIAC and it's an optical coupler and so on one side there's a, um, a light emitting diode that's driven by the uh, uh, microcontroller and then the uh, uh, LEDs light turns on another switch inside this which then turns on this guy and what it does is just isolates the AC um, circuitry here from the, the low voltage DC of the microcontroller so anyways I, I, I looked up this part here and it gave me a circuit diagram of how you're supposed to hook all this stuff together to make it work and it gave component values and I figured out that this value or this resistor here had to be uh, some value I think it was 360 ohms so anyways I put a new one in there and uh, plugged the unit back in and fired it up and instantly that resistor turned into smoke and you can still see some of the soot onto the, uh, the bigger resistor that's just above it there and so I realized okay something is not right here um, I was playing around and I noticed how this uh, heat sink and this triac seemed really loose on the circuit board. And I took the circuit board out and looked underneath and sure enough um, the traces to, this, to the triac were broken. And uh, it looks like that the connections to the triac weren't very good. And um, that turned out to be the problem and the reason why this resistor blew up. And I'll, I'll uh, go through a circuit diagram and show you how the triac works. So here's the circuit around the, the triac. Uh, this is the big triac on the heatsink, the big black thing. Um, this represents the optical coupler, the, the little white circuit. And uh, in order for me to, well, I wanted to check first of all that they'd done the circuit properly. So I looked up this part here and its um, data sheet gives an exact circuit like this and uh, it turns out that the manufacturers of the soldering station um, did it exactly the same way with even the same value of resistors in there. Um, so this is how it, it works. The, this is the triac that controls the current going to the heater. So this is your AC in, the hot lead and the neutral, and the AC goes in through here. Through this, is, this acts like a switch and then into the heater. Um, and the switch this triac switch is controlled by the optical coupler which is controlled by this transistor controlled by the microcontroller and now to turn on a triac you have to give it a pulse of all you need to do is give it a pulse of current and once there's current flowing the triac will stay on as long as there's current flowing through it uh, you interrupt the current the, the triac will turn off once um, you can't turn it off with the gate anymore um, this track relies on the fact that the AC sine wave passes through zero so the current rises to a maximum then drops off to zero and then starts going the other direction and this is how the track actually turns off so when the signal from the microcontroller turns off this stuff 
the circuitry here, um, this track will actually not turn off until the AC sine wave passes through zero. Um, as long as this is turned on and, and this gate is receiving current, the track will, will uh, remain turned on and the current will keep flowing in either direction through it. Now, um, when I was uh, um, experimenting with this initially to figure out what was going on and I blew up that, that resistor, um, I can explain why that resistor blew up. It, ha it happened to be this resistor here that went. So, when this track is turned on here, the, uh, there's very little voltage drop across these two leads here. It's almost like a short. It's not quite, but it, it's about, um, I think it's one and a half volts or something like that depending on the amount of current flowing through there or it might even be more for a track I can't remember exactly what it is but anyways um, when you don't have the track in circuit here when this track turns on which it does the same thing as here it just shorts out these connections here you have the AC line right across a short circuit through here across these two resistors and so and through the the heater core and so you got I worked out about 170 milliamps flowing through these two quarter watt resistors and that, they're dissipating about six watts each and of course one of them's going to give up and one of them did and that, that's why it burned up when this track is in the circuit here and it shorts out here you don't get that condition across these two resistors so you don't get the high current you only get the amount of current that's going to be flowing in the gate here which is only a few milliamps and so what happens in, in the uh, optical coupler here? Well, the reason, first of all, I mentioned earlier why the optical coupler there is to isolate the low voltage circuitry from the microcontroller side from the high voltage alternating current over here. There's no f electrical connection between the two halves of this optical coupler. The only thing that couples the two together is light from the light emitting diode. So when the microcontroller wants to turn on the, this track or turn on the heater, it um, drives this line high which turns on this transistor and the current flows through the uh, LED lights the LED and turns on this track when um, the microcontroller turns off this uh, track over here it simply drops this down to zero volts turns off this transistor no more current through the LED no more light this opens up turns off the gate current and the track will shut off on the next zero crossing uh, you might be wondering what these two parts here are for. This this circuit together is called a snubber. And um, you can turn on a triac without any gate current if you apply a very fast changing voltage across the these two terminals here, like a noise transient. And what these this snubber circuit here does is it prevents um, or it slows down the rate of change of the voltage across the, the track here so it won't turn on. Now um, I've drawn it here already but uh, a noise pulse like this um, would be fast rising like that and that would be enough to turn on the track without the gate current but this the slower rising of the sine wave of the AC line is not enough to turn on the track so that's why the track doesn't actually turn on with the normal AC applied to it until you give it a gate pulse and so this snubber network simply uh, absorbs the energy of that pulse and uh, slows down the rise time and uh, prevents the track from being turned on. It also helps in the track turning off if you've got an inductive load over here, uh, which is not the case here. So here it is now in full operation. So when you turn it on, it gives you the set point of the temperature. Because the wand is in the cradle, it's in standby mode right now, and it just gives you these three dashes. But if I want to change the set point, I can push these buttons to go up or down in temperature. And then when I'm ready to use it, I just lift it off the cradle. You can hear the fan starting up and the temperature rising. And then here, there it sits at 260 at its uh, set point, and it's pretty warm coming out of there. And then I can change the uh, amount of air going through here. And then when I'm done heating something with it, I just put it back in the cradle. And you see that the temperature is dropping now because the heater has been turned off, but you can hear the fan still running. And it's cooling it down until it reaches, I think it's about 120 that it stops at.